Oh, he's going for it. What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And today on Cars and Cameras, we are building a good old fashioned low buck mini bike. I picked up this Doodlebug DB30 for about $120 a few months ago, but it came without an engine. Well, we just happened to have this 196cc Honda clone engine off of our $20 Crusher mini bike. We already swapped a new engine onto the Crusher mini bike, so now we just need to figure out what to do with this engine. Problem with it is, uh, the piston rings seem to be stuck. So lucky for us, uh, Go Power Sports hooked us up with all the parts we should need to get this pile of parts into a running and riding mini bike. Hey man, I think it fits. It looks like it does. So the Doodle Bug is just a classic mini bike. It's one of the most popular uh, mini bikes along the Coleman CT200U, uh, and the Trailmaster MB200, and um, oh, Etc. Etc. Yeah, <laughs> monster motos, mega motos, etc. It's just a really popular stiff chassis mini bike model. So it's about time we add one to the fleet. Dude, this thing. Okay, you know how it was full of water. Yeah. I think that the bearings in the case are uh, probably pitted because when I rotate this crankshaft, it just it feels kind of chunky, but it'll be fine, right? Yeah, man, let's give it a shot. Yeah. So we got to tear this engine down and put some new piston rings and a new piston in it. Yeah. Man, did you go pick us out a new table? Oh, yeah, man. What do you think, man? That's a table. 30 weight. <clears throat> All right, man, we got to try to keep this clean, even though, I mean, look at it. <laughs> so, all right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, thank you. It looks pretty good. Are these sleeved? Yes. Ah, I think, I think the sleeve has been compromised. Really? I think so. I've never so. seen that. Oh gosh. Dude, the sleeve is shot. I have never seen that happen before in my life. That is crazy. This thing is no good. The sleeve is done. It's over here too, dude. So the rust uh, compromised the sleeve and while we were running it, the sleeve was just coming to pieces. Deteriorating and that's probably why it ran like worse and worse. Yeah. Well, all right, so this thing is 100% shot. Well, uh, you know what? We have another uh, 196 available. We do. And it's in pieces. I say we put it back together and we can run that on the bike. I'm hoping that between these two engines, yeah, we can have a running 196. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad, man. Never seen that before. No. I, that's a that's a real thin sleeve. I kind of figured the sleeves were a little bit bigger, like thicker than that. Yeah. But that's a... It's like a millimeter. That's like, no, not even that, man. That's like three, three or four pages thick. This is a paper? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we have a Jang Dom 196cc engine. It originally came off of, I think, our Trailmaster MB200 like enduro bike. We needed a part off it for some other build, and it's just kind of turned into a parts engine. But thankfully, we now have two parts engines. So the new plan is to take parts off of the completely ruined 196, put it on this Jang Dong, and hopefully we'll have a runner. But at this point, if you don't have a parts engine laying around, 
just go out and buy yourself a Tillotson. There's not much you can do about uh, a busted sleeve. I mean, you could go get it bored out, but you know, it just depends on your goals and what you want to do. But odds are it'll probably be more money than it's worth. Man, it looks brand new. It's basically brand new. Yeah, it was such a shame when we had to rob parts off of it. But now we have push rods and I don't know, other odds and ends that we need to get this thing to run. Over the years of working on these engines, we found that like not every 212, not every 196 is made the same. So we're just having a look at the heads, the combustion chambers of both and figuring out what would be the better head to stick on here. That one. Looks like the newer one has a smaller yeah. combustion chamber. So if we were using the other engine, I'd be using this head with a smaller combustion chamber, which would give us more compression. So more compression usually means more bang, more bang means more... More go. Yeah. So we have a new head gasket installed and we are reinstalling the head. We figured that because this is, I don't know. Click. We're basically just making excuses for ourselves why we're not torquing this head on. But I mean, it's a stock engine. It's a junkyard build. It'll be fine, right? Click. <laughs> so the head is completely installed. I double checked the torque with the uh, with, with our with my... torque wrench. His brain torquing cool. Anyway, so it's time to install the valve cover, carburetor, all those bits and pieces. All these parts you can find at GoPowerSports.com. They have all kinds of parts from factory replacement to wild, crazy, high horsepower builds uh, for your 196, for your 212 Predator, your 212 Tillotson, your Hemi, your non-Hemi, 225, 228. If you want it for a Honda clone type engine, they have it. So if you want to check out any Honda clone factory replacement or performance parts for your build or any of the other parts that we are using in today's episode, uh, you can check those out at links in the description of this video. Anytime you place an order on their website, let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you. Looks like you're getting the push rods back in. Getting the push rods back in. I like our little note there. Too toy. Yeah. No push rods. I'm gonna loosen that up some. The uh, push rods, either the gasket that I put in here is a little bit thinner or the push rods are just a little bit longer because it's too tight. Ouch. Yep, too tight. Okay, I looked up the valve lash for a Predator 212 and it is four to six thousandths on the intake and six to eight thousandths on the exhaust. I'm going to set, I'm going to set these up like four on the intake and six on the exhaust, you know, because we're going for performance. Yeah. The, the tighter it is, not going too tight though, but the more lift you have with the camshaft, the more performance. So it's also going to depend, you know, if you have a 196 Predator Tillotson oh, yeah, and the cam you have. So odds are your engine is going to have different valve lash settings. You need to look it up on the cam card or on the internet. Good one, buddy. Valves have been adjusted. Now we're going to install the valve cover. We had to change over the cooling fan so our pull starter mechanism would fit on this engine. Looks like Ike is bolting on our Tillotson TCT carburetor and working on throttle linkage. Mm -hmm. We are really not far from putting this thing on the bike's frame. So our engine is ready to go except for exhaust. But there are a couple things that the frame needs before they can meet. One thing, uh, just tighten the rear fender. We need to flip this front tire around because the tread is backwards. Um, I bet you that fender was supposed to go on the other side of the... Uh, you'll be fine. You mean it's flipped around backwards? No, no. I think this was supposed to go underneath. Kind of like this, right here. Oh. I just bent it, tightened it up. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, it's okay, isn't it? It'll be fine. It's too late now. It's too late now. It's 
interesting, this tire is not center the rim. There we go. Now no one will yell at us for having the tire on backwards even though we didn't do it. <laughs> That's right. So we're about ready to put our six and a half horse engine on the doodle bug. One problem though, the doodle bug originally, originally came with a two and a half horse engine. So the base plate has different mounting points. We have to put this six and a half horse up there, mark the holes that we got to drill, drill the holes, and then we're ready to party. So we're using a new clutch from gopowersports.com, centrifugal clutch. This one is a 12 tooth for 35 chain. They go all the way up to 17 teeth. So uh, if you want to go like really, really high speed, you're going to want a 17 tooth. It's going to help keep the front wheel down as well. But because we're going for acceleration and a short lap time, yeah, we're yeah, going with a 12 going. tooth. Yeah. Sweet. Man. Fills it up pretty good, man. You might be getting jaded with all the 50 horsepower, 70 horsepower, 100 horsepower builds on the internet, but six and a half horsepower on a mini bike this light, is actually pretty decent. If you go back like six years to one of the first videos we ever uploaded, we did a Predator, stock Predator 212 swap on a Monster Moto, and that thing was an absolute handful. So even though it's not gonna make 20 horsepower, it's gonna be a good, strong rider for just playing around the yard. Our Jang Dong 196 is mocked up in the chassis. We are gonna have to redrill some holes in the frame, but we are mocking up our 35 racing chain uh, to make sure our alignment uh, is spot on before we drill said holes right down there. Oop. Oh, you, yeah. Uh. Shifted, but I mean, I think it'll it looks, still looks good. Dang it, Bobby. What's up, Bobby? Oh. Oh, we're good. Yeah. So I just need to take this link off right here. And then we can uh, kind of put it in there and uh, spin it around and make sure it's not um, chunky. Chunky. So the chain is all mocked up and it's important to roll it forwards and backwards to make sure it doesn't make any noise. No chunking. Yeah, it can be tedious, but it's well worth it because you don't want your mini bike to throw the chain. Yeah. All right, dude. Um, I've got them marked. Uh, one trick that we do know that seems to work pretty good, if you take some spray paint and spray uh, over the base of the engine, just a l couple of light little tss -tss. it'll mark where the holes are on your engine and you can drill out the uh, holes. Um, I think that I can take this plate, since I marked it right here, and I can place it and I can mark it better and spend a little bit more time uh, cutting the holes, because we're going to do slots because we want the engine to adjust. So that's that's the idea. I guess I need to do I, I need to talk about the the uh, tensioner on the side here. Yes, we can tension the chain with that tensioner, but sometimes there's just not enough there to tighten and loosen the chain. So I like to have a little bit uh, with the engine too. So uh, that's why we're drilling yeah, slots. Yeah, that's why we're slotting it. Um, so. Uh, also, you can move the engine forward and backwards for performance reasons. Yeah. Move it as far forward as you can to keep the wheelies down. Move it as far back as you can to ride wheelies. I'm not a wheelie person, so... That's what it's about to look like, man. Right there. Yeah. Hopefully not like this. You know what, I'll just drill a hole in the center and instead of having slots, I guess we'll have three holes. We hit a problem. So you remember how earlier Ike was saying that this is only one point of adjustment and we really need slots? Well, with our cutoff wheel, the way, the size of the wheel and everything, we couldn't cut slots. So we just drilled three holes. 
we have three holes very close to one another and there's still we can't still find a good chain tension in uh, one of them is way too tight like you could about play guitar on that thing um, and this is all the way loose well if we move it one backwards this gets way too loose uh, for this chain tensioner to even do anything and if we move one more forward that's just even crazier yeah so we're gonna have to find out how to slot the holes yeah worst comes worse we file it but hopefully we can find something else out fast forward a few minutes and the whole bike is buttoned up and pretty much ready to go the throttle assembly has been installed our brake is working and is installed chain is tight all we need to do is uh, see if it runs and see if our kill switch works so like always, when you're putting a new project together, especially when you mess around with the governor like we just did, you put it up against a wall before you crank it up so you don't have a land missile. We may have put the brake on just a little bit tight. It'll be all right. But it'll be all right, says the expert. <laughs> all right. So, I see you have a lot of confidence that it's not gonna climb the tire in front of your, of your Nova, man. I will be very upset if it did. Go. Hey, look at that. I'm so glad we got this parts engine going again, man. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Got her going, man. Yeah, man. DB30. All right, let's get you a helmet and uh, do some playing around. All right. Oh, so noisy. Oh, this kickstand is down. I think you're, well, okay. <laughs> Your kickstand was down, but the more you rode, the more it kicked itself up. So you're fine. What's oh, that noise? Oh, look to the left. Yeah. <laughs> Kickstand's on, on the right. other side, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, we're good. This thing's scary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you alright? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> go again. See, the reason why we're doing so many projects with suspension lately is because this ground is so uneven. Like, we can't really ride a stiff chassis go-kart, and stiff chassis mini bikes are pretty difficult. You can hear him hollering out there. <laughs> Sounds like he's having a bad time. But, um, anyway, my tractor, uh, I have a box blade for it, and it doesn't seem to do the trick for lever leveling out the uh, dirt. So I'm thinking I might need a tiller or something else. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if you have experience. Do I even need to ask? How was that lap, man? That, I'm not gonna lie, dude. That was the most awful lap I've ever done in my life. Really? I'm serious. Why? Mud. Oh. It is slicker than grout. Gr I'm so upset. Slicker than Gorilla Snot? Yeah. Dude, I entered the woods. Yeah. Okay. For one thing, the, the back end is slipping around. It's these tires, man. Uh -huh. It keeps wanting to yeah. slide around every turn I make. Yeah. 
when I entered the woods over here, yeah. you know that muddy spot? Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't see it. Uh-huh. It so you tried kicking out then. Your life. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst part was that, that little, the wooded part, the... The two trees that are the really two close trees to each that, other. It's I, like a puddle. I feel like I almost took the trees out. Okay. With myself. I should have timed you then, because... Yikes. I need some gear on. Put some gear on, bud. I gotta get some gear on. <laughs> doodle bug, man. What do you think of the doodle bug? Um, I like the bike, but it, it's a... Uh, it's not an off-road bike. Yeah. Not not for this. Now, now a regular off-road and it's fine, but... If it was more dry and had better tires, I'm sure it'd be better, but... Yeah. You know, these tires have always scared me going around corners because when you're accelerating it's just the shape of the uh the tread the tread yeah it slides with with a little warning it just does it so all right let me get um i'm thinking my my chaps no <laughs> dude oh man <laughs> i got excited for a second <laughs> my uh the the shin guards and uh coat and yeah. gloves yep are you ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. the line with a 118.50. What did you think of that, man? It was better than my first go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that I'm probably uh, about 15 seconds slower than normal. Okay. Not that much. How about let's do the surprise thing, where we surprise each okay. other with our okay. times. Um, <sighs> you want to do the best two out of do you want to go again? I feel like I got to go again to... I don't think I'm going that hard. Just heads up. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I got to go again. You got to go again? Yeah. <laughs> hey, he was pretty quick. 114.46. All right, we need a new thing on the board. Not just wet. Yeah. But GS. Gorilla snot. Gorilla snot, okay. Peanut butter mud. Peanut butter mud, gorilla snot. Yeah. Um, bad. It's bad. Mm -hmm. Now, you notice I'm not getting a lot of mud yeah. thrown on me? Yeah, the fenders. Um, there's no standing water, mm -hmm. but the mud is literally like the consistency of peanut butter. Mm. So it's, I, I swear it's even slicker like this than having the water standing in the puddles. Ah, all right. Well, then in that case, you put down a pretty good time. Okay, good. Yeah. I do believe if we put a better tire on it, I can take the corners better. Yeah. Because the uh, corners are uh, scary. All right, well, I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, man. You sure you're ready? Yeah. All right, on your mark. Get set, go. These laps have been the scariest on a mini bike I've had out here. Uh, we hadn't had a whole lot of rain, but uh, the, the, the mud, the consistency is just, it's like grease on, on, on the pavement and you stepped in it. I'm not even gonna try to come in here hot because I know I will just crash like that. 
Come on, John, be safe. Did you want to do another one? Nope. <laughs> that one's good enough? Yeah. All right, how'd you do? Uh, I want to be under 120, but I don't know. You are under 120. Sweet. I think I remember yours. So, you ready to share our times? Sure. So, I'm going to say Ike's. Ike is going to say my time. You ready? Yeah. First digit, one, two, three. One. One. Second digit, one, two, three. One. One. Third digit, one, two, three. Six. six. <laughs> I don't remember the point. So, wow, we are within a second. No, I beat you. Oh, you pooper. Why'd you got to do that to me, Well, man? because if, if you... If you beat me, your last digit would have been seven. Oh, 116.99. Nice. So I'm confident that yeah, we either you tied got, or, yeah, or I beat you. you won, so congrats, dude. Thanks, man. It's a wild ride. Oh, he's going for it. Nice one. It's a really cool bike, dude. Doodle bug for the win. Just goes to show, man, even though we can really build some crazy stuff these days, sometimes just going back to your roots, it's still just as much fun as it was five years ago, you know? Yep. All right, Ike. Final thoughts on the doodle bug. What do you think? Uh, I want to get another one, man. I know. One for each of us. Something about it. It's just awesome. It's cool. It's so much fun. Ah, oh, that guy had two of them. Oh, he did. That's all right. There will be another doodle bug. Um, and if we do get another, another doodle bug, you will see it here on Cars and Cameras. So be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Leave, a th leave us a thumbs up. Wow, I can't talk. Been having too much fun. Um, but yeah, six and a half horse on a doodle bug. Sometimes you don't need much. Just have a good old time. If you want sneak peeks on what we're up to on the channel here, visit us on Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews and Instagram at Cars... Wow, John underscore Cars and Cameras. Check Ike out on YouTube and Instagram at Isaac. It'll be fine. Of course, got to thank our sponsor, GoPowerSports.com. And uh, yeah, that's it. Get out there. Get yourself a doodle bug. And uh, on a separate note, unfortunately, we are not having a mini mayhem this fall. We've seen a lot of comments from you guys asking when mini mayhem is this fall. And unfortunately, just with everything going on in the world, uh, we're going to try to postpone until hopefully springtime. Um, but... We've just been, also separately, we've been really, really busy. Like our West Virginia special was a ton of fun. Check that out if you have not seen it. But yes, there will be another Mini Mayhem. Uh, we're shooting for springtime next year. Um, anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. We will catch you next time. I don't remember it being there. What? The termites. Look, I can see them walking around. So what do we need to do about that? Oh, they have gotten in between the, uh, the, uh, the OSB we put up there and, and the boards. What do we need to do about that? We got to treat this building. Which direction are they coming from? They're coming... I think they're coming from that way.